today we have products flying all over the place, both figuratively and literally. It can be so confusing on what products are really worth your trouble. It's easier than ever to just go to YouTube and learn all about the new releases. It's tech reviewers' responsibility to share as much factual information about whatever they're reviewing. It doesn't help that when YouTube reviewers get products early, they become a little bit lazy and complacent. Things I forgot I was probably being sent. And they give false information or not enough just to keep that established relationship with their sponsors. I know this seems harsh, but when reviewers get new products weeks in advance, it's their job, it's their responsibility to provide as much factual information as possible to better prepare the new release. It just seems that there are more and more conflicting efforts because of the increasing pace of technology. Some points about this Action 4 were just brushed over and I heard some BS about it that I wanted to clarify. The Action 3 ND filters are not compatible as many have said. That's an easy fact to check by just trying it on for themselves. I even heard a very popular YouTuber claim that a 1 over 1.9 sensor was larger than a 1 over 1.3, so it's up to you to research who is delivering the information that you're so looking for. I don't really have a script today. I just thought I'd blabber about my frustrations. Another comment I heard was that the Osmo Action 4 is also not a replacement for the Action 3. I'm calling baloney on that since the Action 3 was released less than a year ago and all improvements were predicated by its existence. When the unfortunate event of a product flaw or bad batch presents itself, it's tough to snap back from. DJI has been able to do so with about as much finesse and grace as any company can by using their warranty process, but that air of negativity still looms when discussing the Osmo Action 3. I'm sure many of you also noticed that it seemed that DJI couldn't wait to release this new Osmo Action 4 with great improvements, and I think they delivered. So now I'll get off my soapbox and let's go to a happy place and talk more about the DJI Osmo Action 4. Before we move forward, I just wanted to let you know that I bought this with my own money, so I'm not obligated to give anything other than my true and honest opinion. I love my Action 3 and could not wait to see improvements with the Action 4. DJI carried forward from the prior release that same build quality and magnetic mounting system. There are many cross-compatible accessories because of the exact weight and size of these two cameras coming in at 174 grams with their respective cages and 146 without. The batteries are exactly the same, and so are the screen sizes. They also forwarded the 155 degree field of view and that dual touchscreen. The minor differences are color marking choices from orange to red, a different branded bottom plate, and different recessed microphone holes. It's great to see the increased sensor size, but I'll save the most important feature in just a minute, because sensor size isn't it. But with that increased sensor size, you do get better dynamic range and also better low light sensitivity. Many are disappointed that they didn't provide higher than 4K, but come on. I mean, it was just a couple of years ago, content creators were talking all about only needing 1080p. 1080p and even 4K are great for small content creators and bigger file sizes and resolutions start to become a little bit strenuous while editing. Of course, if you have that hardware, that storage space, and need to impress clients, it's better to have those higher resolutions, but it really isn't for everybody. That's why DJI is making the most of one of the most widely used resolutions for content creation, 4K. DJI's menu system is leading the way for ease of use. We'll talk a little bit further about that in a second. The onboard microphone system sounds amazing, but many have mentioned that in windy environments or situations, it would be nice to see a windscreen implementation on a cage or attachment similar to what the Sony CV-1 did. And now the cages are removed from both of the cameras. So this is the Action 3 audio test. What do you think of the Action 3 audio test? This is the Action 4 audio test. What do you think of the Action 4 audio test? DJI also increased the maximum waterproof depth from 16 to 18 meters without needing a dive case. The original Action has 10-bit for broader and smoother colors, but it took a firmware update after the initial release to activate it, whereas the Action 4 is 10-bit ready right out of the box. 
It's still awesome to be able to quickly switch between horizontal and vertical recording to cover all of your social media needs. It wouldn't be an action camera review if we didn't do a slow motion test. And both the Action 3 and the Action 4 both get 120 frames per second in 4K, but in 1080p, they both get 240 frames per second. Check it out. The battery life is still 160-ish minutes, and that's one of the biggest attributes to this device with their 1770 milliamp batteries. They allow the device to be handled in extreme cold and warm temperatures, and they do a little bit better than all of its other competitors with the freezing and the lockups. Now I bought this basic kit here with just the camera. It had, you know, just a cord. It had one mount and a sunshade. And that's all I needed because I had the Action 3, and since they had the same batteries, then I just have this one battery pack to take with me to operate two cameras. And usually two batteries throughout the day per camera is going to be sufficient for filming pretty much anything that we need. Now back to the user experience. The menu system and ability to access favorite presets with toggling through with a touch of the side button is so convenient. If you want to have that specific indoor, outdoor, action, or underwater setting, it's right here. As for the zoom feature, eh, I don't think I'd be too crazy about that one because it's still a digital zoom. And since you're at 4K, you know, if you go any less, then it might cause problems in your edit. As for improving the focus issues, it seems great for a solid 4K. Just don't fall for the image comparisons of those reviewers of 5.3 against 4K. They do that stuff all of the time and it's really not a fair assessment or comparison. Of course, you're going to get a cleaner image. It's important to see 4K against 4K. In comparisons to the Action 3, some improvements were made. As for the HDR setting in the prior three, it doesn't exist in the four because of the larger sensor being able to capture more dynamic range and detail in all of the highlights. DJI also implemented on this new device the profile of D-Log-M, which is much easier to color grade, and it goes along with all of their newer products that they are releasing in their drones. Another exciting feature is if you're an FPV pilot, it provided the gyro data export when your stabilization is turned off to allow for gyro flow data compatibility. And speaking of stabilization, it remains the same as the Action 3, which is so very impressive, so no need to improve upon something that's already great. Another thing fans were so happy to see was the ability to adjust sharpness and also noise reduction. The low light signal to noise ratio improved by one stop, so claims DJI, and it's evident. So now for the biggest difference between these two cameras, drum roll please. The biggest difference between these two cameras is they left the negative stigma of the Action 3 behind because of that focus issue and the lack of firmware that unlocked that 10 bit upon release. I'm sure you thought I was going to say the sensor size, which yes, comes in at a very close second. I think the new Action 4 is a much needed successor to the Action 3. Nobody was surprised that a newer model would pop up because, in my opinion, it was necessary to move past that unfortunate release stigma. And yes, I am keeping my Action 3 because I wasn't one of those recipients of the bad batch. The price is around $70 more than the prior Action 3, but I honestly think that that's not such a bad thing, being that we get the new color profile, D-Log M, a larger sensor for a highly needed low light increase, exportable gyro data, an overall better user experience, and adjustable sharpness and noise removal, and not to mention, it left that negative stigma of the bad focus behind. DJI is gaining momentum by doing their best to get their current products right, while others just make another one that's bigger and better, but is it really? Or are they just making one that finally works as intended? You decide. I hope you gained everything you came here for, but if not, be sure to ask in the comments down below. I'm sure I'll get to them as soon as possible. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and keep an eye out for more content reviews by hitting that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Well, 